Ever wonder why everyone's buzzing about Bitcoin? What's this digital gold everyone seems to be after? Well, let's dive right in. Picture this. The year is 2008. The world is in the throes of a financial crisis. Amidst all the chaos, a white paper surfaces on a cryptography mailing list, penned by an elusive figure, or perhaps a group, known as Satoshi Nakamoto. This document outlines the blueprint for a new kind of money, a digital currency free from the control of any government or institution. This was the birth of Bitcoin. But what exactly is Bitcoin? In simple terms, Bitcoin is a type of digital or cryptocurrency. The crypto part refers to the use of cryptography, a method of secure communication, to secure transactions and control the creation of new units. Unlike traditional currencies like the dollar or euro, which are issued by central banks, Bitcoin is decentralized. There's no central authority that can meddle with its value or supply. Now, you might be wondering how is it possible to have a currency without a central authority? That's where a technology called blockchain comes in. Picture a ledger, a record of transactions. But instead of being kept in one place under lock and key, this ledger is distributed across a network of computers, known as nodes. Each transaction, or block, is added to this ledger, forming a chain, hence blockchain. This technology ensures that Bitcoin transactions are transparent, secure, and cannot be tampered with. But Bitcoin isn't just about the technology. It's also about the philosophy, the idea of a currency free from government control, one that offers privacy and security, has resonated with many, sparking a wave of other cryptocurrencies. So, you see, Bitcoin isn't just a trend. It's a revolutionary form of currency that has the potential to change the financial landscape. So now that we know what Bitcoin is, you might be wondering, how does it actually work? Well, imagine a world where you can send money to anyone, anywhere in the world without needing a bank or financial institution in the middle. That's the world of Bitcoin. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network, meaning transactions happen directly between users without an intermediary. But how does Bitcoin ensure that these transactions are secure and legitimate? Enter the concept of mining. No, we're not talking about pickaxes and hard hats here. Bitcoin mining is the process by which new Bitcoins are introduced into the system and transactions are verified and added to the public ledger, known as the blockchain. Think of Bitcoin miners as auditors. They use powerful computers to solve complex mathematical problems. When these problems are solved, the miners confirm the legitimacy of Bitcoin transactions. As a reward, they earn new Bitcoins, hence the term mining. Now let's talk about the blockchain. The blockchain is a public ledger where all confirmed transactions are included. It's transparent, meaning anyone can view it, and it's secure, thanks to cryptography. When a transaction is confirmed, it's packaged into a block and added to the blockchain. Each block contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp and transaction data. This makes the blockchain incredibly secure. Once a block is added to the blockchain, it's nearly impossible to alter or delete. This ensures the integrity and the chronological order of the blockchain. So, in Bitcoin land, transactions are peer-to-peer, -peer, miners verify transactions and mine new Bitcoins, and all transactions are added to the secure and transparent blockchain. In the world of Bitcoin, miners are the workers and blockchain is the ledger, keeping everything transparent and secure. But what gives Bitcoin its value? Why are people willing to pay thousands of dollars for a single Bitcoin? To answer this question, we need to delve into the principles of economics. Just like any other commodity or currency, the value of Bitcoin is determined by supply and demand. Imagine there's a fixed amount of something, let's say apples. If more people want apples but the number of apples available doesn't change, the cost of each apple will increase. This is the law of supply and demand. It's the same with Bitcoin. There's a limited number of Bitcoins, which is capped at 21 million. As more people want to buy Bitcoins, the price increases. Here's where Bitcoin differs from your typical currency. Traditional currencies, like the dollar or euro, can be printed by central banks, which can lead to inflation. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is decentralized. No one can just create more Bitcoins. This scarcity is part of what gives Bitcoin its value. But there's another side to the Bitcoin coin, if you will. Its value can be highly volatile. One day you might see the price skyrocket, and the next it could plummet. This volatility is due to a number of factors, including market speculation, regulatory news, and technological changes. It's also worth noting that Bitcoin's value isn't tied to a physical asset, like gold or a company's performance. Its value is based largely on what people are willing to pay for it. This makes it a bit of a wild card in the financial world. 
So to sum it up, the value of Bitcoin is determined by how much people want it and how much is available. The more demand there is for Bitcoin and the less supply, the higher the price goes. But remember, this also means that the price can fluctify wildly. Just like gold, the value of Bitcoin is dictated by the market's demand. But remember, with high reward comes high risk. Now, you might be asking how can I use Bitcoin? Well, let's delve into that. Bitcoin, as you might already know, is a cryptocurrency, a digital form of money that exists in the virtual world. But how does it translate into our everyday life? One of the most common uses of Bitcoin is for online purchases. Just like you'd use your credit card to buy something on the internet, you can also use Bitcoin. Many online stores and services accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. You can buy everything from a cup of coffee to a luxury yacht, all with Bitcoin. But remember, it's not like your traditional currency where you can just pull it out of your wallet. Bitcoin is stored in a digital wallet, a kind of virtual bank account that allows users to send or receive Bitcoins, pay for goods or save their money. But that's not all. Bitcoin is also seen by many as an investment. Just like gold or stocks, people buy Bitcoin in the hopes that its value will increase over time. The idea is to buy low and sell high, just like in the stock market. But be warned, the value of Bitcoin can be volatile, and there's no guarantee you'll make a profit. It's a high-risk investment that requires careful consideration. And here's a little something for all you entrepreneurs out there. Bitcoin can also be used as a means of raising funds for projects. If you have a great idea and need some funding to get it off the ground, you can use Bitcoin to crowdfund your project. It's a simple and efficient way to raise capital, especially for startups and small businesses. So, as you can see, Bitcoin is quite versatile. It's more than just a digital currency. It's a new way of doing business, a new way of thinking about money. Whether you want to buy goods, hold it as an investment, or use it to fund your next big idea, Bitcoin has got you covered. Bitcoin is versatile. You can use it to buy goods, hold as an investment, or even fund your next big idea. So what have we learned today? We've taken a deep dive into the intriguing world of Bitcoin, a pioneering force in the realm of cryptocurrencies. We've journeyed back to its inception in 2009, birthed by the mysterious entity or person known as Satoshi Nakamoto. A revolutionary concept, Bitcoin emerged as the first decentralized digital currency operating without a central bank or single administrator. We've unraveled the complexities of how Bitcoin works, exploring the intricate blockchain technology it relies on. At its most basic, Bitcoin transactions are verified by network nodes through cryptography and recorded in a public distributed ledger called a blockchain. This cryptographic proof-of-work system is what keeps Bitcoin secure and trustworthy. Then we delved into what gives Bitcoin its value. Unlike traditional fiat currencies, Bitcoin isn't backed by a physical commodity or the trust in a government. Its value is largely driven by supply and demand dynamics, the cost of producing a Bitcoin through the mining process, and the number of competing cryptocurrencies. It's a volatile creature, subject to market sentiment and speculative trading. We also looked at how Bitcoin can be used. It's not just a speculative asset. It can be used for everyday transactions too. From purchasing goods and services online to making international money transfers, Bitcoin is steadily gaining acceptance. Some see it as digital gold, a store of value, while others view it as the future of money. But our journey doesn't end here. The world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is vast and constantly evolving. There's always more to learn, more to explore. If this piques your curiosity, delve deeper. Read about it, discuss it, and maybe even experiment with it. The world of Bitcoin is fascinating and constantly evolving. Dive in, keep learning, and who knows, you might just strike digital gold.